Well, welcome to the Tough Crowd program. A lot of things going on. The uh, Episcopalians appointed the first gay bishop, and half the congregation wants to leave. Isn't it amazing that people can be hypocrites? If it wasn't for gay men, there wouldn't be a church. Be honest. Do you know a lot of... <laughs> come on. All, I'm talking about all the Christians. Do you know a lot of straight guys that can wake up at 5 o'clock on a Sunday morning and put on colorful robes, make sure the altar's right, the chalices are shine, the vestments, and the stained glass? Enough already. No gays, no church. We all know that. And, uh... Do you, no, that's the truth. Now, the old, uh... Leno Letterman feud is back in the news. Leno and Letterman, NBC president Jeff Zucker says that Leno has won the late night wars over Letterman. But the interesting part of the article, which most people did not pick up, but I picked up, is where it says right here, <laughs> well, it's in here, believe me, they have both been affected by the mysterious disappearance of young male viewers. <laughs> who else starts at 1130? <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you who. Also, I'm going to be rich! Oh, I'm going to be rich! <laughs> rich, rich. <laughs> Finally, it's ridiculous. It's rude that I'm not a multimillionaire. <laughs> rude. <laughs> After Sunday's attack against U.S. forces, Bush declared yesterday America will never run from the challenges in Iraq. Should the U.S. get out of Iraq now or step it up, Norton? Um, I, you can't get out now. You absolutely can. I mean, you know, it's like Kobe says, no matter how much resistance you meet, you can't pull out. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Good point. But the only thing pull out now is Sweep Sweep coming. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till after Sweep Sweep. Then you're right. Just, I just became anti-war as a result of seeing a play by Tim Robbins, because that's where I get all my news is from live theater. And, uh, <laughs> And what do you think? Uh, well, well I, I think that we should, uh, real one, I think we should try some of the comedic premises that have uh, been proffered by uh, different road comics that I've heard. Okay. Uh, well, perhaps we send in a, uh, their girlfriend suffering from PMS, or oh, drop okay. porn, or corn. Uh, porn. Porn, porn. Actually. okay, not corn. Porn. I, think, I think we should send in the Bush twins. Yes. Yeah, because okay. one of them drives like a suicide bomber anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way to pull out now. Everybody knows that. Because now if we pulled out, it would be like 1991 times 100. They would just decimate all the people that did support us. So for better or for worse, we're in there. I think There's it no was planned out. this way. I think it was part of an evil plan to, you, you know. Do? Yeah, because it's like, first of all, you, they, you get us into something that we can't get out of, so we have to reelect Bush. Then we can't get out of it in four years from now, so we have to put in Jeb Bush. Then there's going to be George Bush. And then there's going to be like this sea of Bush. You know. Uh, that's I, what Tim Robbins said. I like that. <laughs> I like that's what you They're right. It really was a plan. You know, Tim Robbins, all these guys are right. It really was a plan to bomb the World Trade Center. I guess Bush was behind that somehow. And to really just destroy the thing, and then that would make his popularity. I don't know. They'll have to explain it to me better. <laughs> well, I'm sure it's the whole thing about... It's I mean, nonsense. But there's no connection between the World Trade Center and, and the... Yes, there Iraq. is. No, there's not. Well, who do you think's over there... Who do you think's fighting no, right now? No, actually, the Al Qaeda. The, who do the, you think's in the, Iraq right now? The situation in Iraq who do you is, think's creating, in Iraq fighting? is creating exactly what they As said they were going to the in there. As opposed to the loving, uh, nice uh, th Woodstock they had before we got there, they were destroying and torturing people. I didn't say they had a Woodstock there, but... It's a nightmare there. It's it nightmare. was a nightmare it's there, not... but it was not a nightmare of, uh, it was not an Al-Qaeda nightmare. Al-Qaeda and Saddam Hussein are, are totally opposed to each other. They were, they were ideological enemies. They're ideological enemies, but they have one ideology they both agree with. Kill us. Now listen. <laughs> they agree with that now. They agree with that the, the, war, the war is pushing them together. I told me that's yeah. Well, the war does push yeah. people together, and that's one of the positive things about it. Well, it pushes people apart. <laughs> well, well, we, and why do they want to kill us? I mean, that's the reason. Like, why, why do they want to kill us? You're right. Americans? It's the root because, cause. Is that yeah. it? Because yeah, how about, it is. Oh, really? Yeah. So you think so? Yeah, yeah, I do. I think that there is a root cause. I mean, you everything. know what? There's probably root cause to the fact that they uh, kill gay people over in the Middle East, you too. always don't pull the gay card. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> no, there's a root cause. I'm sure that we should, instead of saying uh, condemn them for killing gays and for... Oh, they went to war in Iraq to stop them from killing gays. And for clitorectomies on women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
that? We should get to the root cause. I'm sure they hit the clear record of women because they're insecure should about they women. And the gay people, I'm sure should, it's a big insecure should, thing. Should, so let's Germany invade America because boys are circumcised here at birth? Well, that's a good idea. idea I mean, because that's, that's ridiculous. That has nothing to do with what I said. But I'm, you guys want to get to the root cause. Male, no, male circumcision, but female circumcision. I'm saying there's no root cause. Once the World Trade Center went down, I don't want to hear about the root causes, is what I'm saying. Because you can say hip hop root causes too. Well, but what Germany about, was very poor in 1920s. Saddam Hussein did not have anything to do with the Germany World Trade Center. was very poor in the 1920s. They were abused and humiliated. You're ignoring, were caused, but see, you're, you're ignoring the whole It's all ignoring. about WMDs. That's the reason that we supposedly no, went. And that's we the reason that Bush may have said, but yeah, I'm talking well, about beyond that. Well, but of you course, keep it to one specific thing. The, okay, Bush lied about the weapons of mass destruction. Well, we haven't found them, but don't worry, we'll put them there. You can't. We won't put them there, and even if we did, you're ignoring what I'm saying, which is root cause my head. Germany had root cause in the 20s. They were starving to death in the streets, humiliated. So, I mean, where does root cause end? Germany invaded other countries. They went, they tried, no, they tried to go in the 1920s, so they, they were Iraq. poverty stricken. So 10 years ago, and they yeah. had the war, and man, you didn't finish it. And they should but have gone back to Iraq. We should have other finished it then. We didn't. We supported them before the rent. relate oh, okay. with the fact that we were asking for it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, have you seen how we've been acting? Let's just let's let's something we all agree on. <laughs> Reverend Robinson was confirmed as the first openly gay bishop in the Episcopal Church, threatening a split in the church. Does the church? <laughs> Does the church need to be more open-minded to stay relevant, Scott? Well, the first thing they need to do is they need to get with the times and they need to raise the hemlines because <laughs> floor-length frocks are so '89. I mean, 1889. <laughs> But is anybody against the uh, church having gays in it? Well, anybody who believes in Leviticus is. But I mean, but Leviticus was bipolar and he was a prick, so who cares? <laughs> my, but my, also, but see, what bi? they do is they, they uh, that's all what they always bring up. They bring up Leviticus because they right. say it was an abomination. But in Leviticus also, it was an abomination to eat shellfish yes. and it's an abomination to have two different types of thread and to have sex with a woman, um, you know, seven days after her period. So there goes your oh, weekend. People. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know who Leviticus is. <laughs> <laughs> he was a singer. He's the he one. was popular. And, yeah. yeah. My parents are actually Episcopalian, and um, oh. they are extremely gay. Uh, they went on a <laughs> uh, bus tour of Norway in matching. Uh, are you a? Uh, are you, is your family very religious? <laughs> That's gay. That's gay. Yeah. I think the church should, should be, become less relevant. So because I'm afraid that if they become more relevant, they'll be able to hang on. And I want to see them collapse. You do. So I hope that the church mm -hmm. hangs on to their fusty but old don't traditions, you think, like these old I wicked know, they queens, all, until they collapse and we can all but be free. But wait a minute. Let's the, say one thing about the church. The Bible is so catty. But, but, it is. <laughs> it's, it's a cover. Yeah. But, yeah. Like, they should have a Stephen King cover but on. But listen to me. I like that. <laughs> well, you know, but they well, have all to lighten up. the criticisms of the church, let's be honest. If you look at any organization in the history of mankind that's done more for poor people, I'm not saying they haven't done a lot of damage, but as far as done good for poor people, the church, the and church, especially no, the church, is the they're great. I they're think the church. They're doing amazing. I, don't I think they're very. You can't deny that. They're very important. <laughs> so I, they I'm not denying that. that. They're very important. Right. They're very, very important. <laughs> However, they need to, they need to get with the program. First of all, I think it's the church's fault that there was all the molesting because they don't ever That's talk right. about sex. Right, so right. then they are not allowed to deal with that. Secondly, priests should be able to get married. If you counsel people, yeah, I if I had to counsel people on marriage and I couldn't get married, I'd be one bitter son of a bitch. I mean, you know, bless me, bless me, Father. My wife doesn't understand me. So at least you have a wife. I yeah. have this poor excuse for a buddy booth. Well, you know, <laughs> we still <so>, actually. <laughs> That's not even true. You know, they need to... glory holes, is what you're saying. <laughs> there is a no, glory no, hole no, in the confession no. booth. No, you can't go Why there. Are you you confessing must every not, day. You must not right. go there. Recent scientific evidence confirms don't leave me alone with these people. How dare you? <laughs>
265 horsepower Nissan Maxima. I have this house that's closing in on me. With three children, it feels tiny. When I try to find my ringing cell phone, suddenly it becomes cavernous. I miss every call. Introducing Singular Fast Forward, a smart device that lets your incoming wireless calls automatically ring through to all your home phones. Best of all, the calls don't count against your wireless minutes. I call it my thanks for making my life easier plan. Fast Forward, another reason Singular fits you best. Entertainment Underground, Union Turnpike, New High Park. Can you trust for the rest of your life for wonderful dreams and long cozy nights? Delivering faster, more value by far. We're always close by, wherever you are. The minute I walked into Sleepy's, I felt great. Their selection was enormous. Shopping at Sleepy's is the best. We're the mattress professionals doing it right. Trust Now, the FCC uh, ruled that Bono saying the F word on the Golden Globes was not an obscenity because he used it as an adjective, which is what Irish people do, you know? They always use it as an adjective. In fact, I might even use it as an adjective right now. We heard this girl's from Ireland, right? And what's your name? Like Patricia. Patricia. Well, that's not a bad Irish name, but you have to have, like, Patricia Mary, Patricia Ann. Patricia Danielle. Okay, that's a little more like it. Patricia Danielle. So there's a little... Uh, French influence, kind of a Beckett, Yates, <laughs> Joyce <laughs> moves to Paris. Still the American one. I don't know. I'm just rambling. Now, listen, miss. <laughs> I don't want no trouble out of you. Um, well, let's have a nice Irish conversation with the only adjectives for the F word, okay? It's a beautiful f day. Aye, it is. It's the f day. <laughs> 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 oh, right, birds, flowers, f***ing sand, f like right here. green. Now, let me ask you something. When you think of f***ing Irish, you think f***ing Colin Farrell. <laughs> And then you think of the real <laughs> Colin Quinn. And uh, Aye. Liam Neeson, have you heard? He's got a f huge hog. Like. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got to think of <laughs> Daniel Day Lewis. Oh, and that <laughs> bastard, like, hey, he's <laughs> good crap. <laughs> All right, look, folks. Language and nudity regulations continue to loosen on network TV. Have they gone too far? Maria, please start, and I'll be right over. My problem with is not the language, it's that they're the Irish on television. <laughs> <laughs> Is, you know, they're, I, I love you, Colin. Oh, I mean, I mean, a lot of my best friends are Irish, but uh, you know, it's just they're so drunk all the time. You know, it's uncomfortable. You know what's irritating about this whole thing? It's like I don't even like you two. But Bono has like a, a real history of doing charity work and of donating money. I mean, this he's like a good guy. Right. And he slips once. And everyone knows it was a slip, and over 200 people call in. It's like we are turning into a nation of just kvetching little wash women who love nothing more. It's sickening that all these people called in, you know, because they knew he slipped, and it's like, you know, it's just sickening the way people believe overreact. That they I can't believe they actually took the time to call in. It's like, get a life. You know, who cares? Yeah, write a letter you know? to Us Magazine. <laughs> yes. You love the picture of Justin Timberlake on the cover. <laughs> the same people. If you care, if, I mean, if you care about any of that, you have to put a bullet through your brain, I think. <laughs> I don't understand why you can't say <laughs> when it does refer to <laughs> thing. What's that? I don't understand why it's obscene to refer to, to use the F word when it actually refers to what it's for. Why is that obscene? Oh, uh, because it's an adjective. I don't know. I mean, um, <laughs> that's but let me ask you this. Now, what this if it's is... an adverb like f***ing f***ing? Oh. You know when you're f***ing Now you guys see why it's banned. There's been sitting here all day. <laughs> yeah. um, now there's been a couple of school suspensions because of kids, uh, you know, they, one kid like wrote something like uh, a, one girl wrote a note, a journal about killing the teacher. The other kid, this kid wrote... This kid has a picture drawn by a 14-year-old boy. It's a U.S. Marine killing the Taliban guy. Yeah. And then he, sh he had a... <laughs> and then he had the, uh, the name of some other kid, Thomas Brooks. 
was here. Like, that's supposed to be Thomas My Brooks. kid's a real art prodigy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but his father and his stepfather are both in the Marine ones in Iraq. So I'm saying the zero tolerance policy, they suspended both of these kids. Is it overreacting or uh, what, Jim David? Well, you know, I mean, you, it's criminalizing thought, and you can't do that. I mean, if I was in trouble every time... Yeah, why, thank you so much. <laughs> you know, I mean... I'm getting a lot of... They must agree with me today. I don't know what's going on. But, I mean, if I was criminalized every time I want... If I, if I got in trouble every time I wanted to kill somebody, I'd never be able to be on this show. Right. None of us would. None yeah. of us would. You know, and it's, it's, it's just, like, it just so, you can't criminalize the thought, because... You, but it's not a thought, it's on paper, so if somebody in well, school... So, well, it's... Oh, but it's, 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 it's if somebody in school writes, I hate f***ing, I hope they die, you don't think they should be suspended because that's criminalizing thought. Are well, you looking at my well, journal again? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was looking at Cardinal O'Connor's. Yeah, I, I think that the kid that did that problem and the girl that wrote the story are kids that are more less likely to act out because they have a creative outlet, and the kids that do it are the ones that don't have the oh, outlet. No, yeah. He's going to tell us good. My okay. concern is that we, we, with the state of our arts programming in this nation, <laughs> that that sort of two-dimensional, I mean, it's just really poorly I thought he was kind of <laughs> and now, yeah. Are we not. getting any life drawing classes in with our kids? Excuse me. Have you looked at Mr. Jim Norton? That doesn't look like him to you. <laughs> no. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, I'll tell you something else. The uh, I think it's stupid anyway. You just, if you're worried about these kids, that's the thing to do. Suspend them so they sit home and stew yeah. Yeah. about the school. Put them on Ritalin. And, and and put them on Ritalin. You know, I say either shoot them where they sit or don't bring it up at all. <laughs> I, I want to make. Uh, sorry. Everything I need to know, I learned watching commercials. So go get your education. We'll be right back. Tomorrow, the kid needs more than Lady Luck to beat Jock Chirac. You're taking Latoya Jackson to the card game? Have you seen her lately? I'd rather bang Michael at this point. It's an all-new Kid Notorious. Tomorrow at 10.30, here on Comedy Central. A private guy caught in the public eye. He's the real thing, and people don't give him credit for that. A reluctant superstar, hero of devoted fans around the world. <sighs> but off screen, out of the spotlight, his life follows a different script. You know, he's had to deal with a lot of death in his life. It's a story you haven't heard. Keanu Reeves, the all new E True Hollywood story, this weekend. Only on E. Designed to resist water, dust, snow, imitation. There's no other digital camera like it. Stylus Digital from Olympus. Designed to do more. It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your deodorant is? Get Right Guard, the only one with a power stripe of extra protection. Right Guard, Hello. right to the end of the day. Are you trying to tell me the world is going to end? If we cannot save it, it will end. Now, play a part in the prelude to the Matrix Revolutions. If we fail, Neo fails, and that cannot happen. Enter the Matrix. I hope you be careful. As careful as I can be. Packed with one hour of exclusive Matrix footage. When she makes up her mind, you go with her or get the hell out of her way. Enter the Matrix before the revolution begins. Rated T for Teen. Thanks for taking care of them tonight. <laughs> The 2004 Jetta. New look, same get up and go. I don't know how he does it. Now on CD and DVD, Black is back, and he's pissed. Are you listening, numbnut? Get Unleashed, a DVD of his best stand-up comedy, and on CD, it's the rules of enragement. Enough is enough! Available in stores and at ComedyCentral.com. You know, um, 
A few weeks ago, we did a terrible thing to some of the regular comics on our show. Tonight, we present the first installment of our tough crowd hidden camera photo shoot. Our five comics thought it was a publicity shoot for Comedy Central, run by our beautiful photographer, Ellie. What they didn't know was that there were a few other cameras in the room, behind mirrors and in the ceiling. Sorry, boys. Tonight, we take a look at Jim Norton. So, Jim, first you tried to impress a photographer with your new health kick. Look. You guys don't have any hot water, do you? The cold water in the fridge and stuff. Yeah, I've been drinking a lot of green tea. Yeah, it's supposed to be very healthy for you, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you exercise or anything, too? Yeah, I just started again. Out of shape, nothing like that. I just started doing uh, treadmill and stuff. <laughs> green tea, it's supposed to be good for you. Was that. I'm trying to 15 make up... or 20 year old information you were trying to give her, you Look, square. I... Shut your mouth and let me finish. No, you're, you're, you're wrong. I'm trying to make up for all my years of condom use, and I think green tea is a, I meant to say, <laughs> lack of condom use. Maybe if I had some improv skills, this would be oh. going well. Ah. Now, Jim, Ugh. either way, just the fact that you like green tea, that's supposed to be good for you. Yeah, that's from 1988, stupid. What else now, does listen. somebody with that head say to a hot chick? Now, hold on. <laughs> I like when she goes, you're walking out, I just started again. Like what, you were down for what, 17, 25 years? <laughs> <laughs> now, Jim, we know you're not Mr. Confidence, but this photo shoot really brought out the self-loathing part of you. Watch this. I'm a horrible subject, huh? You get your smile. Yeah, I'm not a good smiler. <laughs> I'm just notoriously photographed horribly. I have a weak chin and a fat head with a dent in the middle. Big smile. Uh. <laughs> You lean on the table so you look a little more relaxed. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? This is exactly how I should be photographed in a boring fashion, wearing black, holding a microphone, looking uninteresting and uneventful. This is probably the most. <laughs> Maybe turn on the music. Maybe the music will make you. Maybe hold this. Big smile. <laughs> Big returning smile. Spicy? Yeah, perfect. Do something on the table. Nothing? No, I can't think of anything to do. So maybe like scream at me? I just want a little bit more emotion. I really am dead. Great. I don't like All right, Jimmy. Well, I thought you came off very, uh, actually, very self-effacing, you know? And you understood your job, which is to be my bitch and hold up my comic <laughs> I like it. Was that your idea? Was it put it up there? <laughs> what a kidder. <laughs> So, uh... There's nothing worse than when someone's gonna photograph you and they say, do something, and it's like, I'm afraid if I do it, they're gonna think, oh, look at the little ugly person trying to be handsome. <laughs> do you understand? It's almost like you don't want to be exposed like that, so you're just right. gonna, like, like, I suck, and I know I suck, so hey, I'm telling you something I already know. Well, the good thing is, out of all the guys that we tricked into doing it, you came off the least, uh, obnoxious. Wait till you see these other creeps. Tomorrow night, Patrice O'Neal. We'll be right back. on Comedy Central. South Park. Big ass. Mm, it's comedy and delightful. This holiday, you'll laugh so hard you'll... <laughs> With special bonus features on DVD. Hey, Crazy Nights. Buy it now on Special Edition DVD. I love it!
Every piece has its purpose. The element from Honda. Inside that robot is something familiar, a battery. And while you may think all batteries are the same, listen to this. It's just the rain, but with his Phonak hearing aid, he's hearing it for the first time. And when Phonak chooses a battery, they trust Duracell. You heard the rain. So whether it's a child's hearing or child's play, it just has to work. Duracell, trusted everywhere. Shake stuff up. This morning, skip the bowl of oatmeal and drive into Sonic for breakfast, where we're now serving our big breakfast burrito. Fluffy egg, sausage, and shredded cheddar cheese wrapped up in a warm flour tortilla and served with a side of salsa. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. Di Serrano sour, Di Serrano martini. Di Serrano on the rocks. Di Serrano on the rocks, coming up. Serrano's warm and sensual taste makes you wish it would never end. Serrano, pass the pleasure around. TLC wants you to know the switch is on. Let's trade spaces. With just a thousand dollars a piece, two teams, and two enthusiastic designers with two rooms, get two days to completely redo them. The results? I think I made a woman cry once. Too good to miss. She hated everything. It's trading spaces Saturday nights at eight and weekdays at four, only on TLC. Try a new Wawa breaded chicken sandwich made with juicy all whitey chicken breast, served on a Kaiser roll. Available in your choice of club, Parmesan, and custom. Well, folks, you know, this past weekend, the Episcopalians consecrated their first openly gay bishop and also celebrated their previous 500,000 non-openly gay ones. <laughs> what are some other non-traditional fields that gays should now pursue, and why? James David? I think gay people should take over the Department of Defense. We would have an all-gay army. We'd win every war. There is nothing more dangerous than a raging, vicious queen with an AK-47. <laughs> But we wouldn't even be at war anyway. When gay people need to prove how macho they are, they don't have to invade an entire country. They just compare peni at the urinal. One guilty glance, it's over. All yeah. right, Jim Norton, how about you? Uh, I'd like to see homosexuals more openly involved in the NFL. Uh, there might be some problems initially, like the center purposely cutting a hole in the back of his uniform. Or... <laughs> You know, players taking 40 minutes to get up after they pile onto the quarterback, and the occasional instance of uh, one player using another player's jock strap as an oxygen mask. <laughs> but the upside would be that the uh, locker room would always be beautifully maintained, and that pine cones and broom handles in the ass would no longer be considered hazing, but a reward for winning the division. All right. Yeah. That goes out to you, Belmore, right? Maria. Okay, well, I, I, I think I was confused by the question. Um, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know what else gays could do. Um, I mean, I think it's where they, they could be doctors or lawyers or farmers or even comedians maybe. And wouldn't it be weird if um, gay people already had every kind of job and that we just didn't know because, you know, they're so good at, at artistic things like musical theater that they're just really good actors. Uh, we can't even tell if they're gay. Like, uh, uh, what if I were gay and you wouldn't even know? But you you would know if I would, because I'm not a very good actor. I'm, I'm, I'm actually, oh. I, I, I've been cast in things because just because I've known people. <laughs> Scott? Well, first of all, being a gay bishop is, is about as non-traditional as being a gay backup dancer for Cher. <laughs> <laughs> the only difference is most gay bishops are in the closet, and while most of Cher's dancers are in there too, they're not hiding, they're changing into their next <laughs> fabulous ensemble. <laughs> <laughs> the other difference is most gay bishops wear bigger hats. And if you want something truly non-traditional, try being a gay comedian who doesn't wear a dress. Yeah. Well, except when the occasion is formal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're here, we're done. Get used to it.
Good night.